According to the National Sleep Foundation, 37 million Americans snore. Oh, wow. That's a lot of people banished from the bedroom. Hi, I'm Dr. Hamilton Stubbs, a board-certified sleep specialist, and I'm trained as a nutrition specialist. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Interface of Sleep and Nutrition. I think that snoring is one of those things that we kind of overlook and ignore unless you happen to be the bed partner of someone who snores. Snoring is more than just an annoyance. It can be a health issue, especially for the bed partner. But what is snoring? We all know about that characteristic seesaw snoring. <laughs> but did you know that grunting and whistling can also be a sign of snoring? as well as sometimes just talking in your sleep or mumbling or grunting. These are things that could actually be snoring. Snoring is any noise that you're making while you are asleep. That's not sleep talking. So what's causing sleep? Uh, what's causing snoring? Snoring is due to the vibration of tissue along the upper airway. The upper airway is defined as that area from the nostrils to the top of the windpipe or trachea. And when we have abnormalities in that space, like extra tissue or polyps or even tumors, big tonsils, large adenoids, they create a narrowing so that when we try to breathe, that negative pressure is greater and it causes the air along that airway to make those tissues vibrate. And the vibration is the snore. Now, who's likely to snore? Just about everybody. Even children snore. But the person who will be most likely to snore is a person as we get older and a male. But one in four women also snore. And this can be exacerbated by a number of factors. One of them is anatomical structure. If you have a small jaw, or if you have large tonsils, large adenoids, a big uvula, which is that thing hanging down in the back of the throat that some people call a punching bag. Those are uh, tissues that will vibrate and they can cause snoring. If you pick up extra weight, you gain it on the inside too. We don't think about that. You know, we look at the gut and the hips and maybe the butt. And we'd overlook that gaining weight will cause you to get a large tongue and some redundant tissue along the sides and the back of the throat. And this will cause you to have increased risk for snoring. If you have certain foods like alcohol, or if you take any kind of medication, prescription or non-prescription that causes you to be sedated, these will relax your muscles. Alcohol is probably the most common cause of snoring because it's so prevalent. But when you drink alcohol, especially if you drink it close to bedtime, it will relax your muscles. And the relaxed muscles will allow gravity to pull your tongue backwards, especially if your tongue doesn't fit snugly into the floor of the mouth. If you have problems with allergies, and I see this a lot in young people who are not overweight, but you could be overweight and have allergies. It'd just be a compounding of the problem. But allergies, that especially if they cause nasal congestion, will narrow that airway and cause snoring. People don't always realize that they have a food allergy. So one of the things you can do is a food allergy snoring journal. And you can download that on my website with this book and I'll leave the link below. The book is How to Stop Snoring for less than ten dollars. So when you find that you have allergies, let's just say to a certain type of bread, if you always eat that bread and you feel some nasal congestion, you may be allergic to either one of the preservatives or ingredients or just the bread itself. So you would not want to eat that, especially close to bedtime. So other allergies are things like uh, to flowers or trees. And if you have your windows open, 
you can get some problems with those causing nasal congestion. And sometimes that can cause your snoring. Now, snoring will disrupt your sleep, even if you're not aware of it, because if you snore loudly enough or intensity is very high, it can keep you from going into the restful stages of sleep and staying there for the adequate amounts of time to cause restorative sleep. If you snore very loudly, some people wake themselves up. And this will cause you to have a lot of wake after sleep onset, which will make you feel like you haven't had a good sleep when you wake up the next day. You have to know that snoring can be dangerous, especially if it's loud snoring and associated with obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Obstructive sleep apnea syndrome is the complete or partial reversible closure of the upper airway that occurs during sleep. The symptoms are divided into daytime and nighttime symptoms. I wrote a blog on that, and you can find that at drhamiltonstubs.com and look for my sleep tips blog and just input sleep apnea, and you'll get all of the blogs that I've written on obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, including the one on what is obstructive sleep apnea syndrome and the daytime and nighttime symptoms. The other thing to know about snoring is that researchers have found snoring alone can be an indicator of hypertension. So if you snore, you probably want to check your blood pressure just to make sure that you don't have hypertension and be sure to use the new guidelines from the American Medical, the American Heart Association. One of the most interesting complications of snoring happens to the bed partner. Researchers looked at the hearing in people who snored and their bed partners. And what they found is that the person who snored didn't always have a problem with their hearing, but the bed partners consistently had unilateral hearing loss for high frequency sounds. Snoring can be very loud. It can be over 85 decibels. So it could be a dangerous medical injury. It could be a sign of a dangerous illness or could just disrupt your sleep so that you don't feel rested. If you think your obstructive sleep apnea, if you think your snoring could be associated with obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, there are some self-help questionnaires that could help you. And those too are on my website at drhamiltonstubs.com. So how do you stop snoring? This is something that you can do with the help of a healthcare provider or you can try some do-it-yourself techniques. The healthcare provider can prescribe an oral appliance that fits over the teeth and pulls the jaw forward. This is a little different from an oral appliance used to treat obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. There's also a tongue retaining oral appliance that has something that looks like a little suction cup. Your tongue goes in there and what this does is keep the tongue in place or at least keeps it from falling backwards and blocking off the back of the throat and causing snoring. There are things that you can get from your dentist called a palato expander. You can also have a sclerosing procedure done on the back of your throat to tighten up the soft palate to keep that from uh, vibrating. If you are interested in muscle training, this can be done by a speech pathologist or there are some therapists that um, specialize in just training these muscles of the upper airway so they're more uh, firmer and less likely to collapse during sleep. Nasal strips are a good option. These are purchased over the counter and you should look for some that tape across the nose but they also expand out because this is going to open up that nostril a little bit. This is very helpful for people who have allergies and a little bit of nasal congestion. The nasal ring. Now this is different from the nasal ring that people are wearing for fashion. The nasal ring for snoring has two little balls on the ends and it fits at the very tip of your nostrils. And what you're trying to do is stimulate the nerve endings that go to the soft palate and when you stimulate these nerve endings, it will cause your soft palate to tense up so it won't uh, vibrate during sleep. You can also try a nose dilator. The nose dilator 
will fit into the nostrils and just kind of make it wider, sort of like a nasal strip, but there are uh, some things that you can use and reuse more often than your nasal strip, so it might be a little bit more cost effective. If you have allergies and you want to use over-the-counter nasal spray to shrink down those nasal terminates, just be aware that if you use that every night, you can get a rebound effect and the congestion will be worse than when you first started. If you smoke tobacco, know that tobacco is an irritant to the nostrils. So if you stop smoking tobacco, you might also stop snoring. That's just another good reason to not smoke tobacco. Sleep deprivation will make your snoring more intense. And if you don't know how many hours you need in the window of seven to nine, I did a video earlier on how to determine how many hours of sleep you need. So just check that out and um, see if you can make sure that you're getting adequate amounts of sleep and how that affects any snoring. A chin strap can also be helpful. These will fit under the chin and usually um, around the top of the forehead and they just keep the lower jaw from falling open. You can use a humidifier in your room if the room is very dry because dry air is associated with irritation of the nostrils and can be a cause for snoring. You can also make what's called a sleep shirt. And a sleep shirt is just a repositioning shirt that will help you stay off your back. So if you want to know how to make your sleep shirt, be sure to go to my website, drhamiltonsdoes.com shop and download the ebook on how to make your sleep shirt and stop snoring for less than ten dollars. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, do so now. Click on that button. I try to make videos once a week and I usually release them on Wednesdays. Stay safe and I hope to see you next week.